video on June the 9th, 2015, and I'm going to be showing you this relationship between the Sun and Mars and how over the next week they're going to be within one degree of each other, very combust. So this combustion of Mars now is really urgent, um, which means Mars is completely on the opposite side of the Sun right now. Um, as you can see, they're both about 24 degrees, well, 24 for the Sun, 25, almost 26 for Mars, but you'll see how over the next several days, um, including with the Sun changing signs, how the Sun and Mars are going to be within like one degree of each other. So just watch these degrees change. This is June the 9th, June the 10th, June 11th, June 12th. You see the Sun 27, 26, Mars 27, 57. That's on June 12th. June 13th, 28, 24, 28, 38. You see how when Mars is deeply combust, it moves at almost the exact same speed as the Sun relative to us. I'll show you this on the astronomy app in a minute, but this is um, very important as you see. Um, the next day, June 14th, Sun and, you know, Mars, I, I'm sorry, the Sun actually passes Mars, but they're really exact, 2919 and 2921. Now the sun here is also what's called Sunday, which means it's changing signs, which is also a volatile place. So here, like on June 14th and June 15th, with the sun changing signs and Mars being deeply combust, is a huge um, thing where we could be feeling a lot of, you know, anger and irritability. Um, you could really see some explosiveness around the world during this time, from like June 10th to about the 18th. Um, but certainly around the 14th, 15th, you can really see it. Now you see the sun is in Gemini, Mars is in uh, Taurus still, but Mars is 29.59. The sun is less than one degree, 18 seconds. And then, you know, so this is this is when it's the most combust, is when the sun is changing signs on June 15th. That's when Mars is furthest away from the Earth. And then at June 16th, Mars is 40, the sun is 116. The 17th, now it's almost one degree separation. Now there's one degree separation. Mars is two, and um, the sun is three, so it starts to separate then, um, and, and it's more than one degree. So this entire thing that I've been showing you, whoops, going back to the 12th, or going back to the 11th, 10th, yeah, actually on the 10th, they've been within one degree. So from the 10th to the 18th, Sun and Mars are within one degree of each other, which is the most combust that you could see. And here's how this looks in the sky. You can see if, if, if we move the Earth each day, you know, this is the 10th, uh, June 10th, June 11th, 12th, 13th, you see these are the exact, you know, this is exactly how it looks in the sky. This is like June 11th, this is June 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You start to see how now there starts to be some separation. But on these days here, you can see where it's like exactly in line. If you were to draw a line through the center of each of these three orbs, you would see how even here it's not quite, look at back, it's not quite lined up. That's on May 31st. And then as we move forward, you see it looks exactly, almost exactly the same speed for a while. Then June 17th, 18th, it starts to change. In addition to that, we also have Mercury is turning direct. So this is June 10th, and then by June 11th, at some point during the day, let's get the exact hour. This is June 11th. I know that's the date. Yeah, so June 11th at about, at about um, 3.30 Pacific time. You know, so it's practically June 12th, actually, for most of the world. Later in the day on June 11th, Mercury um, stops being retrograde. Now, that means that he's stationary. So Mercury will, uh, will appear stationary for a couple of days. So it basically means that we'll start seeing Mercury actually moving forward and feeling Mercury moving forward probably around the 13th or 14th. Um, because he stations for a couple days, it, it appears to stop in the sky. Then he really starts to move forward um, on, uh, yeah, so he's retrograde, then 
pretty much stationed for about a day, day and a half. You know, six tenths of a degree is really not that much. 1048, 1104. So he's still moving really slow for like the 15th and 16th. Um, he's actually stationed, yeah, it's a little bit longer, about four or five days. But anyway, he'll stop moving retrograde. Um, and we'll start seeing Mercury moving forward after the 12th of June. So that means that some of those issues that perhaps came up for you while Mercury was retrograde, certain kinds of communication issues or certain kinds of things, maybe with technology um, and whatnot in a mundane sense, um, will start to move forward. And then in a, um, you know, in a, in a more esoteric sense, like I talked about when Mercury went retrograde, it was really a good time for you to do some editing and to check in with the voice in your head and to really get clear about how you interpret things, how you understand things internally, how well you listen to others, how well you've been listening to the voice in your own heart and soul. Moving forward on those things that you've been pondering and reflecting will start to happen around, like I say, the 14th, 15th of June when Mercury starts moving forward again. If you've been stuck in some sort of communication problem with someone, then maybe you'll feel better about, you know, sort of moving forward with that again um, by that time. Um, and so, so those are a couple real important things over the next week or so. This Mars-Sun combustion is really important. So one of the things that it can do is bring about things like headaches. If you've been experiencing more headaches lately, I know I have, um, you want to notice this. Drink a lot more water. Now's the time to really hydrate because Sun Mars really brings a lot of heat, a lot of pitta, a lot of fire. And you want to drink, make sure that you stay hydrated, drink a lot of water. Um, that's the best way to stave off a headache for sure. But it is it brings a lot of power for discipline, focus, concentration, and will. The combustion doesn't destroy the effects of the planet. It just creates a, a, a sort of touchiness about it. So when Mars is combusted, it can actually bring a lot of discipline, a lot of fire to see what's right and do it, do the right thing. Of course, the problem with Mars is always, instead of doing the right thing ourselves, we impose what we think is the right thing on others, and we stick our nose in their business and argue with them and develop all these strong opinions about what they should be doing, especially as it relates to us and how what they're not doing is affecting us and all that. That's the negative energy with Mars where we waste our energy with Mars rather than using that fire to burn up our own karma and to burn up our own weakness and ignorance. There's a saying in Tantra that's related to anger and karma that has to do with other people's anger and you know it's hard not to react to other people's anger but they say that when when you don't react to other people's anger then their the fire of their anger actually burns up your karma think about it when someone comes at you with their anger and you take it on it's very easy to think oh I'm a victim and we can be a victim sometimes if we lack the courage to fight and then we just take it on then we're failing ourselves. But if you have the courage to fight, but you choose not to fight, then the fire of their anger actually burns up your karma. And it's it's an interesting way to look at it. And again, it's it's you know, without being like trying to win, like, well, I'm gonna let your karma I'm gonna let your anger burn my karma so I win. You can when you approach it with compassion, which is really what it is, it's a compassionate choice not to respond to their anger because their anger is obviously coming from a place of hurt. Their anger is to protect their fears and something that's that's not integrated rather than trying to, you know, you know, beat them at their own game and use their anger to burn your karma when you see it through a compact, you know, because in that sense you're going to be fighting the battle still and you're going to be using that competitiveness of Mars. Instead, when your compassion doesn't react, then then that anger burns your anger karma. This is how we overcome anger. It's really the only way is to not react not react to other people's anger. And this is the truth with all all karma really, when you think about it. Anger is a big one. Um, in that in that regard, because we always justify 
getting angry because, well, they did this to me. They made me angry, so why shouldn't I throw my anger on them? But that's the only way we're going to transform anger is to not react to other people's stupidity or whatever it is. And there will be plenty of legitimate reasons to get angry. It doesn't mean that you are, quote, wrong. It means what do you want? Do you want to win or do you want to grow? Do you want to evolve? Do you want to win the argument? Because God knows, you know, if you're, if you're intelligent or logical, you can win the argument. But you're going to win the argument. You're, you're going to be dissipating the powerful Mars anger, which is discipline, Discipline to be strong and to hold your hold the fire within you. So, because you need enormous amount of self will and enormous amount of courage to face your own problems, that you you need more than you have through the ego to just do that. Like even if you have a really powerful Mars filtered through your ego, it's still barely enough to face and to overcome and to defeat your emotional problems. And what we wind up doing is rather than taking the the fire and the power and the tejas, which is which is sacred fire, rather than using that to illuminate our own problems and then having the courage to face them, we take the limited amount that we have and just throw it out and dissipate it and, on others, and then there's nothing left for ourselves. Then we wind up experiencing it through our mistakes. So the real power of this combust Mars is it brings all this fire, but again, the uncreative choice is to dump it on others. The creative choice is to have it be internal and reflective and use it to burn up your own negative tendencies. And so when people come at you with anger, just take it on and don't react. Try not to react internally. If, if the best you can do is say, you know what, you SOB, I'm going to let your karma burn up. I'm, I'm going to let your anger burn up my negative karma and it stops you from reacting, then do it. The best way is to just have it not even start a whole thing in you and just let it let it illuminate that sacred light within you. Because that's, that's the source of all fire. The source of all anger and fire is clarity and illumination. And we see what's right. And we want everything to be right according to how we see it. And how we see it is a very legitimate way to see it. But nothing external is going to give us that. We can only get right with that sacred fire within, what's called teja shakti, rather than pitta. It's not just pitta. Pitta is the dosha, which means the imbalance. The imbalance of fire is pitta. The integrated sacred fire is called tejas, which is the kundalini that rises. The sacred fire is the fire of the kundalini that rises in the sacred body. Because our kundalini does... Because we dissipate the tejas and the sacred fire on external arguing, which is in the form of pitta, the kundalini doesn't rise, and our higher levels of consciousness are not unfolded. So this is how astrology is connected to yoga and the sacred path. All of this is, this is what's meaningful in astrology. Predictions and all that. All that happens after you learn what you're looking at, but what's really important is understanding the divine potential in all this energy. And so the divine potential of Mars is Tejas, the courage to face your own stuff, keep your energy within, in this astral body, in this astral universe. And when that happens, the fire moves up into the higher dimensions of consciousness rather than getting dissipated in arguing and all of these other things. So... Bear that in mind the next few days. Drink a lot of water for the next week or so. As and you know, and even afterwards, you know, Mars is you know, Mars and the Sun are going to be within each other for you know within a couple degrees for for you know for a couple weeks. So you know, this last week or so, even Mars and the Sun have been very close to each other. So this combustion of Mars is going to be very powerful and very prominent. Um, and also, as I said, Mercury turning retrograde is a time for you. Hopefully, you listened to what I said and you were have been reflecting on what's on that voice in your head, on your style of communication as it relates to listening, not just talking, and then also editing with distinction and with uh, discrimination, that voice in your head, what it really means, what it's really saying, what it really says to others. And being, you know, 
you know, being flexible and creative and curious about that and willing to examine what you could perhaps be doing better. So it's natural if that has been an um, internal process the last several weeks as since Mercury has been retrograde, but then he's going to start moving forward and at least by the 15th or 16th, we will start to feel the, you know, the effects of wanting to reach out more, wanting to hopefully communicate a little more and move forward with some of those issues. So I hope this was helpful. I hope things are going well for you.